Science Gallery Melbourne. Thank God you all came back. Jeez. <laughs> Not to conform to stereotypes, but I am going to be playing the role of the whinging pom today. Because I'm going to use my ten minutes to vent to you all about one of the biggest issues going on in astronomy at the minute. And so, my name is Ryan Turner, I'm a cosmologist, and I'm going to be talking to you today about an argument that's been going on between two groups of astronomers for decades. This titanic struggle in the war for truth. The biggest argument in astronomy since the Pluto incident. <laughs> People are arguing about a number. <laughs> and I know what you're thinking, it's just a number, who cares? Who ca who, like, what's the point? Well, I care. <laughs> this is the most important number in my life. <laughs> and I don't mean my height. <laughs> or my weight. Or any other measurement. <laughs> The number I'm talking about is the Hubble constant, and it was uh, discovered in 1929 by Edwin Hubble. Co really coincidence that he found some in the both the same name as him, but... <laughs> and what he did was he took a bunch of galaxies, measured their distances and velocities, and what he found was that the further away a galaxy was from Earth, the faster it was moving. He fed a line to that data, he measured the slope of that line, and you get h naught, the Hubble constant. H means Hubble, naught means now for some reason. And this tells us a lot. This tells us the age of the universe, the size of the universe, how fast the universe is expanding, and all of the matter in it. In other words, it's fucking important, right? <laughs> and we don't know what value it should have, right? The best answer we have at the minute is that everyone's right. No one's wrong. Everyone's correct. Like, no one's feelings have to be hurt. Everyone's valid. <laughs> Participation trophies all around. <laughs> Congrats, you tried. But before I get ahead of myself and completely unravel, what is a cosmologist? And that's a very good question. And I do mean cosmologist, not cosmetologist. <laughs> I don't need to know what cosmetics are. I don't need to go to beauty school, I mean, just look at me, right? <laughs> I'm already perfect. And I'll take my look down the camera now, hello? <laughs> no, the only makeup I'm interested in is the makeup of the universe. <laughs> I care about what in, what's in it, how it, how it started, how it evolved to now, and what it might look like in the future. So Dave said you're going to learn something today, so welcome to the Universe 101. What is it? i going to tell you two things about the universe. Number one, it's made of stuff. <laughs> going in order from, it goes by with three things, going in order from the biggest to the smallest. Number one, dark energy. This is 69% of the universe. Don't laugh. <laughs> this is serious. And this is like evil gravity, right? That stretches space-time. It's this negative force that permeates the universe, like systematic racism. <laughs> Number two is dark matter. This makes up 26% of our universe. And it's, it's the, it makes up most of matter in our universe, and it acts like glue that holds galaxies together. But it's invisible. We can't directly say it, but we know it's there because we can measure its effects on the surrounding environment and everything in that like systematic racism. <laughs> Number three is atomic matter. Last but not least, this makes up 5% of our universe. And this consists of everyone and everything you love and you cherish and you think is good. <laughs> like cats. <laughs> or your box set of the office. Or the guy who walks from Melbourne with the carrot. Yeah! Claps for carrot guy. Love it. So that's number one. Number two, the universe is expanding. All of that stuff is expanding in space. And so we know what Big Bang Theory, yeah? We've heard of that? Yes? Nods? 
So the idea is that everything in the universe that we saw in that first part was at one point all much closer together. And so everything was really hot and really dense, like being at revs at 1am. Yeah. <laughs> now, this is a science comedy talk, so maybe some of you don't know about this revs thing. <laughs> So instead, let's switch tack and imagine that you're baking raisin bread. <laughs> Stay with me, right? So you're, you've got your, you're making your bread, so you have your dough, and so all of the raisins in the dough are really close together. Like, maybe they're just about to finish high school and they're saying things to each other like, Oh, we, I love you all so much. We can, we're going to be together forever. We're best friends. <laughs> I imagine that's what raisins sound like. <laughs> But as we all know, time passes. You put the bread in the oven and it starts to rise and it expands and all the raisins slowly drift apart. And then they maybe text like once a month now and they don't see <laughs> each other anymore. And they realize that you maybe don't have that same connection that you used to. And maybe that you, you took the best years of your life for granted. <laughs> Anyway, galaxies are like that as well. <laughs> and so galaxies in the universe expand like raisins in the bread. And the Hubble constant tells us how fast that expansion is occurring, okay? And so can you see the issue I'm having? If we don't know what value Hubble constant should have, I can't do something as fundamental as measure how fast the universe is growing. And the worst part is, so we did it to ourselves, right? And that's always the worst. <laughs> it's like, in the last 100 years, we got really good at measuring the Hubble constant, right? That's what that big clump of black points is on the right. And we sort of figured out it was like about 70. But we couldn't just stop there, could we? <sighs> no. <laughs> what we've done is we got really good. And so two groups emerged with two different methods and they get different results. And that gap in between is called the Hubble tension. <laughs> That's what it's called, I'm not joking. <laughs> and this disagreement is like, it's in the pantheon of great debates alongside, what do you call this? <laughs> I didn't say there was any participation from the audience. <laughs> What do you call these? Again, there was no participation for the moment. And which of these is footy? And I didn't even put league on there. But all of these, as much as you guys all love them, these are meaningless, these mean nothing to me. These are the undercards, the supporting acts to the main event. Shoes versus plank. Those are real names as well. I'm not lying to you. So we'll start off with Planck. Woo! <laughs> Fans of Max Planck in the audience, I guess. So Planck was a satellite that was tasked with measuring this. It's not the Rashi Goddard revs. This... <laughs> this is a map of our universe, and all these small little fluctuations represent different temperatures and densities. And these correspond to places in the universe with different amounts of mass. And so we can take our understanding, oh, sorry, this is the universe as it appears around 400 year, thousand years after the Big Bang. So it's the universe's first baby picture, essentially. And we call it the CMB. And so we can take our understanding of this map, combine it with physics and maths. Ugh. And we get some, we mix it all in a big pot, and we get something at the end called the expansion history of the universe, and essentially measures how the Hubble constant has changed from the beginning all the way to now. And you measure it now, and you get around 67-ish. So that's Planck. What about shoes? <laughs> Weird sentence. So before I get into this, I should say that astronomers don't have personalities, okay? <laughs> 
And to compensate for that, we gave all of our projects quirky little acronyms. So what SHOES actually stands for is Supernova H0 Equation of State. Now, I don't know about you, but that's a shit acronym. <laughs> You're missing words. Or... This is what happens when you give us participation trophies, right? We just forget how the English language is meant to work. So, like, if that's a good acronym, I could make it say instead, Sport Heat. Or Super Hoots. Or Ooh. <laughs> Sorry for the scare. <laughs> so now that I've offended a, a potential employer about their naming conventions, what do they actually do? Good question. They do what is called a local measurement of H0, and they do it with the distance ladder. So they measure the universe, they use the universe today to measure H0 today, which seems like a good idea. And so essentially they calibrate this very long cosmic ruler to measure very far distances. So they start with nearby stars, which you can measure quite accurately. Like I can see all of you in the front row really, really well. <laughs> um, but the people at the back, not so much. So we use the nearby distances to calibrate distances to further away stars. And we use those distances to calibrate distances to supernovae, which are even further away. And we can measure the brightnesses of certain supernovae really, really well so with the distances we've calibrated with our big ruler and those brightnesses, we can get back to H0 again. But now we measure 73, not 67. And that brings us back to the worst plot in my life. <laughs> what we find is that we have 173 measurement, 167 measurement, and so what you might be thinking now is, that's just six. Like there's a difference of six there. <laughs> Why is this such a big deal? Well. This gap in the middle, this is what we call in the business a discrepancy that exists with five sigma confidence. In English, it means that there is about a one in three and a half million chance that this gap that you see here is not real. <laughs> in, to put that in context, if you're like me and under 30, that's about the same chance as you ever owning your own home. <laughs> So what we're finding is that this is, there's a 99.99997% like chance that there is some real physics thing going on here driving this difference. And we don't know what that is, which is bad. <laughs> and so, <laughs> like these are two really robust measurements, right? Like two entirely different methods, really robust. We've checked for like, any issues in both of them, believe me, we've checked. And there's nothing wrong. So, like, what do we do? Like, what comes next? How do we even begin to figure this out? I don't know. <laughs> this is the crisis in cosmology, and it's giving me a crisis as well, right? Like, this is the Hubble tension headache I have. And it's going to take like the next Einstein to figure out what the issue is here. And that's just not me. I mean, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should change careers instead. <laughs> Thank you everyone. I've been Ryan. You've been my audience. <laughs>